a Georgia elected official ask the sheriff, hey, I need you to investigate this. And then that elected official ends up being arrested for multiple felonies herself. Well, that's exactly what happened. Put up the picture full mass. Hell of a story here. This is in North Georgia. Commerce City Councilwoman Roshonda Merritt has seen her new career as a recently elected official get off to a rocky start after an attempt to go to the local sheriff's office for help led to her being arrested for felony charges. Charges of the high crime of marijuana distribution. This comes almost a month after she was sworn into office. So Jackson County Sheriff Janice Magum said the charges came after the 43 year old lawmaker asked the Jackson County Sheriff's Office to intervene against someone who had allegedly posted inappropriate photographs of her on social media. The sheriff telling the Atlanta Journal Constitution, quote, she reached out for help and filed a report about inappropriate photos. She was the victim. So let me give you the law. Georgia law criminalizes the distribution of sexually explicit images without the consent of the person depicted. Sharing revenge porn is considered a felony when a person posts a sexually explicit image on a website. In such cases, the offender may face a prison sentence of one to five years and or a fine for up to $100,000. If the act involves posting the explicit content on any other electronic platform, it is treated as an aggravated misdemeanor carrying a potential prison sentence up to 12 months and a $5,000 fine. After starting the investigation, the JCSO discovered evidence. Now that's kind of vague, but this is how they characterized. Discovered evidence pointing to a different crime where the public school teacher turned politician was placed under the microscope, so to speak. Merritt allegedly sent a photo of four THC infused gummies. Oh My gosh, we must suspend this investigation immediately and charge the elected official with massive distribution of controlled substances. There's more. All right, so they found a picture said, okay, she sent a picture with a text that said, let her know if anyone wanted to purchase said gummies, according to an arrest warrant. Uh, and uh, the AJC report. Uh, so at that point, the sheriff says, I stopped my investigation. Wait, wait a minute. What do you mean you stopped your investigation? She said, at that point, I stopped my investigation and requested the GBI. The sheriff continued, quote, I felt like it would be best for them to become involved because of her position on the Commerce City Council. And because she was a Jackson County School employee, the JCSO handed over discovery pictures and text messages of her phone of THC gummies that they allege point to the councilwoman selling the cannabinoid narcotics. I, I never heard it referred that way. They call it cannabinoid narcotics in the police report. You know they're reaching right, cannabinoid narcotics. Okay, uh, that's cute. Out of her Jackson County home. The GBI, uh, they came down full force, arrested the elected official on January 19th. After reviewing evidence, they charged her with a criminal attempt, a criminal attempt to commit the sale of marijuana and use of a telecommunication facility to facilitate a felony. Merritt, who represents War 5, turned herself in and was booked into the Jackson County Jail. I'll put up the attorney. The attorney has a, a great, great question here. So the attorney, uh, so Merritt is represented by attorney Jason Black, uh, who questions how, how did law enforcement go from working on behalf of investigating her, Black told the AJC, quote, how was a case able to be made against my client before they were able to solve a revenge porn situation where my client is the victim. And people wonder why nobody goes to the police for help. 
end quote. The lawyer did not deny the gummies were his clients, but said Merritt had sent the text messages before she was ever an employee as a teacher or elected to the city council. They charged her with conspiracy, except nobody knows what those pictures were. Are they THC or CBD or gummies out of a Captain Crunch box at the store? Um, if it were me, sir, it was, came from the Captain Crunch box. Quote, what they did was they made a whole lot of assumptions and claimed she was attempting to distribute THC and added the use of a telephone for basically asking, do you want one of these? Black added, still, his client is facing swift backlash and distancing from those who believe the charges are enough for them to step away. Jackson County School Systems released a statement saying, quote, it is aware of the ongoing investigation regarding a former employee of the system. We are cooperating with law enforcement agencies. While the district referred to her as a former employee, as of Tuesday, January 23rd, she was listed in the East Jackson High School staff directory um, as a career technical and agriculture teacher. Uh, so let's put up the assistant city manager. His name is Matthew, Matthew Haley, City of Commerce. So. Uh, he released a statement regarding the arrest and the municipality's position on merit status in the city council. Quote, because this matter involves an open and ongoing investigation, the city of Commerce has no comment at this time. So Commerce, uh, the city clerk, Sandra Haggard, was not as vague, telling the AJC, quote, this is a personal matter done on personal time. It occurred prior to her election. It has nothing to do with the city whatsoever. Our city charter says there is nothing for us to do unless there is a felony conviction in the court of law. And everybody is innocent until proven guilty. That's what I'm talking about. She probably broke all kind of rules by making a statement outside of the normative process of the city manager. But good for you, you told the truth. Everything you said was factual. Um, once again, black female leadership just got there. Probably raise some eyebrows. Maybe she says something that was not part of the you know normative chain of command. How you should structure a statement, or she offended somebody. All of a sudden, she's a prolific cannabinoid narcotics dealer. Wow. All right. Just just the thoughts here. Yeah, you know, for as long as weed is still illegal in parts of the country and at the federal level, they're going to just continue using it as a reason to lock people up or just to discredit good people. They're really gonna miss all the conveniences of this war on drugs, which has only ever been a tool of government control from its very conception decades ago up until this very day, it seems. There is absolutely a difference and a distinction that needs to be made between that which is lawful and that which is just or good. There are plenty of laws on the books today, and there have been plenty of laws throughout this country's history that are fundamentally and demonstrably unjust, whether that's on a moral level or just in terms of equity and the way that they're enforced. And here we have a woman who was victimized in a very real and scary way, but somehow having having gummies or Captain Crunch cereal is somehow considered to be more offensive and more dangerous and a higher priority than the revenge porn that she was originally seeking help with. And that revenge porn, again, just a reminder, is considered a felony. So if the point of law enforcement is just to serve and protect, then they're just not doing it. And they wonder why people have so much public distrust of law enforcement. And it's just like you said with the previous story, this is another instance of you know, the main thing is being made to no longer be the main thing. And coincidentally, black women in positions of authority have been the victims in both of the stories that we've discussed so far. Yep, that's right. Um, once again, both are felonies, right? Statutory. The sheriff said, I stopped my investigation in order to call the GBI on this elected official. It's insane. 